<laughs> On this day, July the 19th, 1836, the HMS Beagle with Charles Darwin aboard arrived in Ascension Island in the tropical mid-Atlantic. Professor David Norman is a fellow in natural sciences at Christ College, Cambridge. Uh, we can speak to him now. Morning, David. Good morning. Um, it's one of those famous voyages. People have heard of Darwin and uh, HMS Beagle. What was what was the purpose of it and why, why has it become so famous? Well, the purpose of it was nothing to do with Charles Darwin. The purpose of it was to make a sort of hydrographic survey of the world. Uh, the, the Admiralty was very interested in, in naval ports all over the, all over the world. Um, this was part of a sort of surveying expedition. And the captain on board of this the second voyage of the Beagle um, realized that actually, because of the sort of class structure on, the, on, a, on a boat of that type, and the isolation that the captain might feel because he was in a different class from the, the, the sailors, um, uh, risked uh, suicide because on the first voyage of the Beagle, um, the captain did indeed commit suicide. And it was thought to be loneliness and a lack of social contact um, with the, with the, during the entire voyage. Um, so Captain Fitzroy, the new captain, decided that it would be good to have a companion. Um, the, the idea behind that was that actually if you had somebody with whom he could communicate and, and share ideas and also have somebody who had an understanding of the natural world and might be able to make other observations that may be of economic value to the Admiralty, um, that might be a useful combination. And Charles Darwin in the end was chosen as the companion for Captain Fitzroy. In a sense that the rest is history uh, because Charles Darwin proved to be a very gifted um, observer, uh, of socially adept as well, kept Captain Fitzroy alive in a sense. Um, but uh, the, the observations that he made uh, were rather interesting. We all think of Charles Darwin as the great biologist, um, the man who uh, created um, the circumstances around the, the publication of The Origin of Species which has transformed our understanding of the biological world entirely. He's utterly dominant. But while he was on the voyage of the Beagle, rather curiously, he was actually, as far as he was concerned, a geologist. He was um, making observations on the rock uh, and the rocks and minerals that he found when, when he, they, they uh, arrived at land on port and he made excursions into the surrounding countrysides. He made a huge collection of rocks and minerals and his, his, his abiding interest really at that time was, was just what was the earth like, how was it built and how did it work? Uh, and did, um, did that connect then up to his theory of evolution? Once, once in, he establishes the age of the earth, I suppose you then have time for some of these, these, uh, these uh, systems to operate. That, yeah, in a way, yes. Um, what, what, in truth, he was um, what was what we call a natural philosopher or natural scientist. He wasn't just a biologist or just a chemist or just a geologist. He was actually to looking at the whole of science. Um, his observations were: How does the Earth work? Um, and he did that by looking at rocks and minerals. And then he expanded that in a way to say. Well, OK, I think I understand how the Earth formed and how it works and how we create the different rocks and minerals that we see. And he then applied that thinking to biology. And he used actually a rather similar way of thinking to explain how uh, animals have become more and more varied over time on plants, have become more and more varied over time and have truly evolved. And he, that was a sort of way of thinking that he had already developed when he was thinking how the earth is formed and how the earth is developed. Okay, that's fascinating stuff. David, great to speak to you. Thank you for joining us this morning. That's Professor David Norman, fellow in natural sciences at Christ College, Cambridge, talking about Darwin on HMS Beagle. Uh, my favourite Darwin story mm. as well is that when he submitted Origin of a Species, one of the publishers refused to publish it and said, can you take out everything apart from the bit about pigeons? Because everyone loves pigeons. <coughs> <laughs> and thankfully oh. he ignored that. What your publisher tells you isn't always good advice is a lesson that every writer since then has probably had to, to listen to. I am sure. Uh, many of you have been getting in touch about, um, about the weather. I'm going to read this one out actually because this kind of goes to what we were saying earlier about there being a something of a divide, possibly a culture war over the weather. Um, Anne says, please 
Please, can we have some perspective on the reporting of hot weather? It is summer. You always get a hottest day. If today's is a couple of degrees hotter than last year's, so what? We know how to keep cool by applying something called common sense and personal responsibility, something lacking since March 2020. This hysteria is pathetic. I mean, I am no expert, but I think that if it's getting hotter every year, then that would suggest a problem. But we're going to speak to someone who knows more about that later on in the programme from the uh, Energy and Climate Intelligence Unit. And Eddie says, um, if we're going to get hotter weather, we must rethink the way we insulate our houses. Insulation is designed to keep heat in the house. We will have to install air circulation or air conditioning in all new builds.